Hello and welcome to another quick tip video. Quick tip video is all about genuine photography tips, tricks and camera hacks that I really use as a photographer. No gimmicks, just proper tips and advice that I've picked up over the years. The most of these will be free or very inexpensive, but will be sure to help you with your photography. Now before we get into this tip, if you haven't already done so, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up if you find the tip useful and you want to see more. So today's tip is all about noise. Not audio noise, but noise in your pictures from ISO being too high. I'm going to show you how to fix it, why you need to fix it, and the best ways of doing so. So what exactly is noise? So the easiest way to explain what noise is, is to actually show you. So if I flip over to this camera, now I should be all pixelated and noisy. That's because the ISO level on this camera has been set really, really high. So if I flip back to this camera, now that should be a lot better. It should be nice and clean, and you shouldn't be able to see all those pixels in the image. Now that's because this camera's, the ISO level is set nice and low. But it's not always as simple as that. There's going to be occasions in the photography where you, you need fast shutter speeds, or um, you're shooting a low light where you're going to have to grin and bear a little bit of noise in your images. Now it took me many years to work out the importance of noise reduction software in, uh, in photography. The reason why it's so important is part of the exposure triangle. You've got your shutter speed, your aperture, and then you've got the noise or the ISA settings. So we've got more confidence to shoot at a higher ISO setting and then be able to have the ability to remove the noise afterwards. That means we're going to have more flexibility with either our aperture or our shutter speeds, which is great. So now we know how important it is to remove that noise Let's work out the best way to do so. Now I've put together 10 software packages that I've either used before or I currently use now, uh, which removes noise either free of charge, uh, which five, just by chance, five of these are free of charge, and the other five you have to pay for. Now I've used one image, the same image, so if I look here, this is in Lightroom. Uh, this is the image, it's a real life example of a red kite. Uh, I shot this for shooting settings 1,250 of a second, F5.6, the ISO 3200. So we're going to use that same one image for all 10 bits of software uh, to see which one works out best. Now it's not going to be just the end result I'm going to measure it on, it's also going to be how easy the software is to use, um, if it handles raw files or whether you have to convert them first, and also cost as well. So uh, let's start with number 10 and see uh, where we go. Oh, make sure you stay tuned for the top five, because number four is a real shock and uh, and number three is actually a free of charge bit of software. It doesn't cost anything at all and it's really, really good. So make sure you don't go anywhere. But let's start off with number 10. To someone has to be in last place and unfortunately it's Fastone Image Viewer. Now I love this bit of software. It's really good for viewing images like the name suggests and also for converting them, batch converting them um, and comparing them side by side. In fact, I'm using this bit of software now to do this side by side comparison. So I, in fact, I think I've done a quick tip video on this bit of software alone, which I've got a link up above, which I really do recommend it. Now it has got a noise reduction part to it, um, but unfortunately, as you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison with Fastone Image Viewer, what her conversion is here on the left-hand side, and then you've got the original uh, raw file on the right-hand side. You can see it's removed some of the noise, but it's also removed a lot of the detail as well. It's not done a great job, to be honest. Um, but it's free of charge and it does work on your raw file, so you don't have to convert it at all, um, which is a good thing. But let's look at number nine. Now, number nine I'm quite disappointed with is Canon's Digital Photo Professional software, which comes with all their Canon cameras. Now, it's free for Canon users to, to use this bit of software, but it's not done a great job at all. It's removed some of the noise, but it's uh, removed lots of details. It's also given some sort of color cast here, some blue tinge. So it's not great at all. It does work on raw files though, but um, and it obviously is free, but unfortunately the results aren't great at all. So uh, let's move on very quickly to number eight. Okay, number eight is the free to use software, which is GIMP, which is like a Photoshop equivalent, but a free of charge one. Um, it's done a fairly good job. If you look at, I mean, now a good thing about GIMP is you can use layers, you can mask it, it's very, very complicated though, so it's um it's not very easy to use. So I've marked it down for that and the results aren't brilliant. There's nothing automatic about it, 
but um, if you've got the time to, to use it, it is free of charge. So um, it's, it's in there at number eight. Let's look at number seven. And number seven is actually Photoshop itself. So only make number seven, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, you have to pay for the software and it's confusing. There are two reasons why you it's been marked down a little bit. The results are, I'd say, average. Um, and you could probably spend hours and hours trying to get it in finesse for the results of this. Um, but there's lots of software out there which can do the job much quicker and much better. So let's move on to number six. So number six is Lightroom. So it's probably a bit of software which a lot of you out there use. I certainly used Lightroom for many years for noise reduction until I realized there was better options out there. So it, the good things about Lightroom is it's easier to use in Photoshop. It does a fairly good job. Um, it does type, some type of masking as well, but it is easy to use. Um, so that's the good things about it. Bad things, it costs money and it doesn't do that good a job. So if you look at uh, the before and after image here, you can see that it's removed the noise, no problems, but it's also removed a lot of the detail. So let's move on to number five. So number five is part of a NIC collection and it's a defined module. So it's purpose built for removing noise. So it's pretty much automatic, which is lovely. So you can just upload your image into it. It will test the image itself with some special algorithms it's got to work out how much noise is in the image and then it'll remove it for you. Um, you can then fine tune it afterwards if you need to, but uh, it's pretty much an automated system. Um, the downside of it is that you can't use raw files on it. So you have to convert your images first, but it does some very good uh, noise reduction. And if you look at the image on the right hand side, compared to the original image, you can see that you've still got quite a lot of detail in there and remove the noise nicely. So let's look at now number four. So number four could be a bit of a shock for a lot of people out there because it's actually the in-camera RAW processor in your cameras itself. Now I use both a Panasonic one and a Canon one and for this image of a red kite that was on the Canon camera but the Panasonic one did just as well in fact it may even be done a little bit better on the images I used with the Panasonic. Um, so if you look here on the right hand side you can see the, the results. It's managed to remove the noise and keep a lot of the detail in there. Now the thought process behind this was what better instrument to remove the noise than the instrument would put the noise there in the first place. So that was a thought process behind it and actually it's worked quite well. Um, the downside of them, so there doesn't tend to be a huge amount of settings, it could be like noise reduction settings one, two or three. Um, and you can't really see the results of that until you then, then really either zoom in. So it's a bit fiddly to use, um, but it is free of charge. And it works on raw files so um there's a lot to be said for them it's hit number four because the results are very good so it's something worth uh, worth trying out right let's look at number three so number three is dart table the dart table is a completely free charge it's almost similar to um to lightroom probably just not quite as user friendly but it's got a lot more stuff to it than lightroom um now, if you have a look at the before and after, you'll see it's done a really good job there. It's removed all the noise and kept most of the details in on the red kite. Now, one of the best things about Dart Table, not just that it's free of charge, is the fact of how easy it is to, to work. There's four different modules for Dart Table how to remove noise. There is one downside, and that's really for me personally, um, because I've got a Canon camera which shoots with a CR3 um, raw file. It doesn't recognise that raw file as yet, which means that two of the automated ways to remove noise don't work on the Canon file. Um, so I've had to go in there manually and do it. But um, if you look at how it works normally with this Panasonic raw file, this is how easy Dart Table normally works. If this file here is shot at 3200 ISO, if you look, zoom in, you can see the noise here. So there's four different ways. Uh, there's a non-local means, bilateral filter, and raw denoise, and then the profile one. Now this profile one, if I just turn it on, and you can see it will just work away, and then it's done it, removed all the noise. So it's, it's as easy as that. It doesn't get much simpler than just flicking a switch, and it does a really, really good job. Um, if I turn it off, and turn it back on again, you can see so if you go into it you can see exactly what it's done is it's found the camera 
and then found the settings for the different uh, ISO levels and then it apply it to the image. So it's a really strong, powerful uh, bit of software. There's more technical ways to remove noise as well, but I find that profile one works really, really well and it's so quick and it doesn't cost a penny. So it's really worth, if you haven't ever used uh, Darktable, download it, try it out. You really have nothing to lose. So in number two is from DxO Labs, which is their Prime Denoise module. Now, the downside of this is you do have to pay for it, but it does work with RAW files. It works as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom, um, and it works really well. Very easy to use. It's also got other stuff, not just for Denoise stuff. But when you pay for it, you have the whole edit suite, which you do get. Um, but we're concentrating on the denoise and it's done a really good job at taking the noise away it's got lots of detail left in there it's easy to use quite quick um, but the only downside that I'd say is that Darktable is so good and it's free of charge is it any better than Darktable just a fraction um, it's a little bit easier to use or a little bit more user friendly to use in Darktable maybe but apart from that would I pay for it probably not but it's a hit number two because it's done a really, really good job. Um, but let's look at number one. So number one, and that's Topaz Denoise. Now that's purely a noise removal bit of software. It does nothing else. It will not source out the exposure or shadows, highlights, dodging and burning. Forget about that. All it does is remove the noise, but it does it extremely well. Um, you do have to pay for it which is a bit of a downside and the other downside is it doesn't work with cr3 files those raw files from canon um but it does an amazing job um it seems to be like a magic wand to whatever it touches with regards to the images so if you look at the before and after here um then you can see a massive difference and i don't know how it does it but it seems to keep so much detail in the image it almost seems to enhance the image as well as remove the noise if I show you, so it's a clear winner here um, with uh, with this image and if I show you another image of where I've actually used this bit of software in real life. So if you look at this image here, this is another picture of a red kite. Now this one here, the, I shot it at 1250 ISO um, and if you zoom in you can see the noise there and because I'm going to have to crop in on this image, that noise is going to become a bit of a problem. So when you zoomed out, you, there's a, there's, you can't see the noise, but when you zoom in, you can see it. And I really do need to crop this image to make any type of picture out of it. So by running it through denoise, if you look here at the before and after, a one to one, you can see the difference. So this is the before, and this is the after. And denoise seems to just I don't know, it just seems to make the image look so silky and smooth and fixes any issues with regards to um, any sort of pixelation issues as well, which means that you've then got the confidence to then process it properly and turn it into an image like this. So Topaz Denoise is a clear winner there. Not only does it seem to remove the noise really well, but it seems to enhance and even sharpen the images even better than they were before. So I strongly recommend if you are going to invest a small amount of money on this type of software, then that's the one to go for. If you're looking for a free option, Darktable is the next best thing. But as like I said, Topaz seems to stand out uh, an awful lot. So look, I hope that's been useful for you. Please hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like this sort of uh, these sorts of quick tips um, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.